So you have a new board game in mind, or maybe you're already working on one. Whether it's your first project, your eighth, or your 200th, playtesting is a crucial step in the process, and one of the most satisfying. But without the right method, it can eat up a lot of your time to just get your game playable each time you make a change. Time and effort that could be spent working on your game instead of working on getting your game to the table. You might be thinking it'd be nice to improve how rapidly you can prototype and playtest after making any changes. If so, you're gonna love this. When I started making games over 10 years ago, I started at what I like to call level one. I hand wrote everything on pieces of paper that I would cut out. Maybe you're smarter than I was and you're at level two and you use spreadsheets and Photoshop and print before cutting out. You could be at level three where you play your game digitally on something like Tabletop Simulator. Let me introduce you to level four. Dexterous is a website that you can use to manage your game project. It allows you to set up card layouts so you don't need to design and make changes to each individual file. One feature that makes this so special is the ability to export that project. Dexterous paired with something like Tabletop Simulator allows you to make changes and play your game incredibly quickly. But we're not stopping there. In this video, I'll walk you through what you need to reach level five, where you and as many others as you'd like can make as many sweeping changes as quickly as you'd like that will update every single card and token in your game near instantly. I wanna show you what this looks like immediately. So check this out. So as you can see here, this is one of the main spreadsheets for our game. And I wanna use it as an example for how I can make a lot of changes really quickly. So let's say after last night's play test, the best way to move forward is actually to rename every card overflowing strength. And that also, the cost of cards was actually pretty confusing. And we like the idea of everything costing a single slice of pizza. And then lastly, the point values were pretty low. And we really think that the best way to move forward is to make everything worth 99 points. And as quickly as that, we are able to go play test all of these changes. Come over into Dexterous and we tell it to refresh the data and update to all the changes that we just made. You can see that everything is now called overflowing strength, costs one slice of pizza and is worth 99 points. Next thing we need to do is export this and tell Tabletop Simulator to update its information to the new changes. You give it just a couple of moments, it runs through a loading bar, and as quickly as that, we are able to jump into Tabletop Simulator. So this is a snapshot of one of our games recently played, and you can see that all the cards are still individually named, have different costs, and are worth one to four points. Now we want to play test our changes. So we go back to the main menu, and that part's actually important, I'll explain that later. Let's create ourselves a new game, and as quickly as this, we can now see that everything is called overflowing strength, costs one slice of pizza, and is worth 99 points. There was a time when I would make all of those changes, one page, each card at a time, one image, one text field. This is the difference between level three and level five. Recently, my buddy and I went back to the drawing board for our game. But by using the tools and method in this video, we were able to rapidly prototype and play test our game into a very good spot in just about a month and a half. All right, so what do you need to do this? Let's walk you through the steps. Step one, create a Dexterous account. You wanna make a game, something you can rapidly prototype and play test at lightning speed. Use Dexterous. Simply go to their site and create an account. The free tier is more than enough to do everything you'll need. Once you've created your account, you need to make a new project. So go to the project page and hit the plus sign to create a new one. In the top left, you can give it a name. Start by adding a component, but each component needs a layout so select the new layout option. A layout is a template for a component. Imagine a set of cards or tokens in your game that all have the same format. You can make more. The interface is fairly self-explanatory. On the left side of the screen, you can import images and control the size of text. Across the top, you can create layers and you see them in a list on the right. Here's a few examples from our game. You can play around in here as long as you'd like, or you can make a simple card and come back to make it look pretty later. At any time, you can export your cards to be printed. Or better yet, and more importantly, you can export as a tabletop simulator file. This allows you to load all of your components at once into TTS so you can play virtually with your friends on Steam. Step two, tabletop simulator. So you're making a game, but you need to play test it. I think that play testing your game digitally is the way to go. When it comes to rapid prototyping and play testing, it is infinitely easier to get your friends together to play your game online than it is in person. I should know I've run D&D 5e. It's also infinitely easier for strangers to try it out digitally as well. Tabletop Simulator is my platform of choice to play test my games. It is a virtual tabletop where you can play and do pretty much anything you can think of. 
It's a community-driven game that costs $20 on Steam, where people have uploaded every board game I've ever thought to look up. It's a great platform to play games, which makes it a great platform to playtest games. Depending on how involved you wish to get, you can program just about anything you can think of. You can import custom assets, automate games with scripting, automatically count resources. You can even place a virtual tablet on the table that you can browse the web or open PDFs with. The sky's the limit. And most importantly, when importing a Dexterous project file, you have every component you've ever designed instantly ready to be shuffled and used at a moment's notice. But we can take it even a step further. Step three, Google Sheets. When making a game, the best way to make sweeping changes is through the use of spreadsheets. You can see everything at a glance because every value is right there listed next to the others. You can compare the wording of effects side by side, change the VP values of every card all at once, make sure every card's name follows the same theme, change how many of each card are in your game, and sort by every variable you have. Spreadsheets allow you to take it a step further. You can set up reference pages for shorthand, or you can make pie charts showing the percentage of card types and categories in your game. But I think the biggest benefit of working on your game in Google Sheets is that you can edit with as many others at the same time as you'd like. Most other platforms or methods, you're stuck working on each file individually, and if anyone else is helping you, you tend to overwrite each other's work. You can spend as much time as you want customizing your spreadsheet. By publishing this to the web as a CSV, Dexterous can make all the changes you make here to all of your cards with a click of a button. When you have all three things, Dexterous, Tabletop Simulator, and Google Sheets working together, it's like assembling each piece of Exodia. You win the game. If you want to try it out, there is a link in the description where I have provided everything you need to do this yourself. It's a starter kit. It'll walk you through step-by-step -step to download a template Dexterous project with a link to a Google spreadsheet that you can copy for yourself that is linked to that Dexterous project. This way, you can hit the ground running with most of the work already done for you. Feel free to reverse engineer it for your own purposes. If you are interested in more helpful tips for game design, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss when the next Tabletop Crack video is released. And there is one final step to follow. Step four, playtest. So you have your game in mind and a good idea on how to rapidly prototype it. Now you need to playtest. Go get some friends together and try it out. But maybe you could use some new friends or a fresh set of eyeballs to take a look at your game. If that's the case, then you can come join me in the Tabletop Craft Discord. I'm starting a new community on Discord for beginner game designers and playtesters, and I'm filling it out with all of the best resources I can find, all the lesser known tips and tricks and best practices like the method in this video. If that sounds cool, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. I think that this could be a cool place to gather like-minded people who you can bounce ideas off of and ask their opinion on specific questions. Help me build this community of game designers and playtesters by clicking the link in the description. Come say hi. Once again, there is also a link in the description that you can follow to get a head start on how to do this for your game. Just know that I'm not your guy when it comes to specific technical questions. The Dexterous website has in-depth, step-by-step video walkthroughs for you if you learn best that way. And if you have specific technical questions, the Dexterous Discord is the perfect place to ask them. Talk to the guys who made it. They're great at responding to questions. I hardly know enough to make this work in the first place, so go talk to them about the how and why it works. A quick tip and a lesson learned. I would suggest turning off the mod caching option in Tabletop Simulator. This will save you a step each time you go to play. Also, when making changes to your game, keep the same number of components. If you don't, you'll notice that the card art and text are split between each card awkwardly. Hopefully, if you run into that issue, you'll remember this bit in the video. Also, my buddy Rob might have recently discovered the secret to unlocking level six. Fingers crossed. Join the Tabletop Craft Discord if you wanna learn more about that. Once again, my name is Dave Jeltima. Happy playtesting. Thanks for watching.